Welcome back to another Space News Update. This week we've got progress from Rocket Factory Augsburg ahead of their maiden flight, Spaceport Cornwall prepare for life without Virgin Orbit, the Axiom Crew 2 mission returns to Earth, Skyrora gear up for their next launch, the UK Space Agency goes on tour, and Satellite View get ready to become the world's thermometer. Plenty of action for sure, so stick around and let's get going. All right, uh, lift off and the clock has started. All right, everyone, welcome back. Now, as I'm sure you will all know by now, perhaps in no small part thanks to my last video on it, Virgin Orbit are no more. If you haven't seen that video yet, do go and check it out. I will link it in the description below, or you can go back through my channel history and find it. But that begs the question, what are Spaceport Cornwall going to do now? And who is gonna fill that cosmic girl sized hole that they've left behind? As we know, Spaceport Cornwall isn't designed for vertical launches, so they need somebody with horizontal takeoff capabilities, just like Virgin Orbit. And an option for that just appears to be on the cards. Canadian SSTO manufacturer Space Engine Systems have just announced an extended partnership with SPC, building on their previous memo of understanding that I mentioned a while back in a previous video. They have signed a lease for a new testing facility down at the spaceport. Space Engine Systems aim to build and test a reusable, sustainable hypersonic space plane with the capability for them to be both crewed or autonomous. Their demonstrator, the Hello 1X, is a piloted and optionally autonomous test platform designed to fly at Mach 5 and utilize liquid multi-fuel combustion, enabling flight up to 32 kilometers in altitude. Ultimately, they hope that this aircraft will pave the way for their Hello 1 and Hello 2 SSTOs. Hello 1 will utilize a combination of two combined cycle turbo ramjet jet engines and a more traditional liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen rocket engine to carry payloads of up to 550 kilograms to 100 kilometer orbits. Hello 1's big brother, the Hello 2, will beef up the system even more with between four to six ramjets as well as the rocket engine, enabling it to carry over 5,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit, 1,700 kilograms to geosynchronous orbit, and perhaps up to 760 kilograms to the lunar surface. Uh, that is going to utilize a transfer vehicle, however, so we will not be seeing an SSTO take off from the Earth and land on the Moon anytime soon. Since my last mention of Space Engine Systems a few months back, they've been hard at work on their turbo ramjet engine, what they call the DAS GNX. They even managed to test one such model, as seen here, back in April. The DAS is a combined cycle engine, meaning it's an air-breathing afterburner jet engine from 0 to Mach 3, and a closed cycle ramjet from Mach 3 to Mach 5, with a pre-cooler to enhance the operational range of the engines. Now, this combination of ramjet and rocket engine is perhaps likely to have more success from the outset than the so far non-existent full SSTO, which is designed to use only the ramjets to achieve orbit. A system like that doesn't exist in its full operational form, but a number of companies are working on this at the moment, including, of course, Rolls-Royce and Reaction Engines with their Sabre system. Next, the Axiom Crew 2 mission uh, returned from their trip to the ISS this past week. Peggy Whitson and her crew had a successful eight-day stay on board the orbiting laboratory, where they carried out around 20 different scientific experiments, including research on the effects of microgravity on stem cells, and broadcast to tens of thousands of school children while they were at it. Peggy Whitson further solidified herself as the American with the longest time spent in space, having now reached 675 days between her NASA and Axiom careers. She also became the oldest woman in space at the young age of 63, and she's showing no signs of stopping anytime soon, having flown aboard two space shuttles, two Soyuz vehicles, and now Crew Dragon Freedom. Freedom successfully splashed down in the Gulf of Mexico and was recovered by SpaceX's recovery ship Megan, so named after Crew 2 astronaut Megan MacArthur. 
We also had the successful launch of the next NASA Tropics mission by Rocket Lab. Launching at 3.46pm New Zealand time from Launch Complex 1 at Mahaya in New Zealand, we were treated to more of those epic drone shots of the Electron taking flight on this mission dubbed Coming to a Storm Near You. Rocket Lab really seemed to be perfecting the tracking of these drone shots as this capture was simply stunning. A little over half an hour after takeoff and the CubeSats were deployed, with signal acquisition occurring between one and two hours later for each satellite. So this now completes the small constellation for NASA's tropics system. Remember this constellation is down to four satellites instead of the originally planned six, thanks to that failure by Astra and the loss of the original two CubeSats last year. NASA will now begin their important mission of monitoring severe weather activity on Earth, including cyclones and hurricanes, giving advanced warning to emergency centers as they prepare for America's upcoming hurricane season. Now, finally some good news from Skyrora, who have announced the manufacture of their next Skylark L rocket is well underway. Following on from their failed first launch attempt in Iceland last October, Skyrora have high hopes that this latest iteration will achieve some success. The Skylark L is a suborbital test platform for the larger planned Skyrora XL vehicle enabling the team to test critical systems that will be shared by both rockets. Now, if you can cast your mind all the way back to October last year, the first Skylark L suffered an anomaly caused by a software fault, and it landed in the Norwegian Sea after reaching an altitude of only 500 meters. That was eight months ago, so I'm pretty sure that this has given the team plenty of time to work through the issues and solve the problems, and we are keeping our fingers crossed for more success this time out. There's no word yet on when or where a launch might occur, but you can be absolutely certain that we will be asking them for more information and keeping our ears to the ground to let you know as and when we can. Next, Satellite View are gearing up for their first launch, hopefully later this month. And they have announced that they have secured another £13 million in funding, bringing total investment to £30.5 million in venture capital. This is a positive sign indeed as their first satellite, the Satellite View 1, gets ready to launch on board a Falcon 9 rideshare mission later this month. Now, surprisingly, there's actually no official launch date been announced by Satellite View, but from all the previous press releases, we can gather that June the 12th is when SpaceX's next Transporter 8 rideshare mission is due to take off from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. One of the cool things about Transporter 8 is it's actually due to have the next payloads from Alba Orbital on that as well, so that would be a really cool thing to have two UK companies both flying SpaceX and releasing satellites, especially one of this importance from Satellite View. The View 1 was built by SSTL in Surrey and is based on their dark carb platform. It will utilize a 0.32 meter diameter telescope and a mercury cadmium telluride cooled detector to monitor temperature fluctuations in a range of capabilities day or night. Satellite View are aiming to ultimately have a constellation of these satellites in orbit, providing global thermal monitoring which has the potential to assist in disaster support activities as well as for emissions and thermal efficiency monitoring. So it's a really cool multifaceted system that has a wide range of applications and we certainly cannot wait for this first one to launch. Speaking of thermal activities, Rocket Factory Augsburg have announced the completion of their first ever full duration hot fire test of their upper stage Helix engine. Following on the back of a successful campaign at Saxevoord earlier this year, they moved to the Esrange Space Center in Sweden to carry out this next crucial test. Lasting a full duration of 310 seconds, including 280 seconds of engine runtime, this was the final engine test needed for them to certify and qualify the upper stage Helix for flight 
and boy did it perform like a dream, with absolutely no red lines being tripped by the monitoring software. The full duration test saw the engine do enough to demonstrate the capabilities of RFA's stage combustion system, where exhaust gases are fed back into the combustion chamber as opposed to being dumped overboard as with traditional open cycle engines. Now, Interestingly, this was also the very first full duration hot fire test carried out anywhere in Europe. The team are now going to turn their attention to the first stage Helix engine and run it for a full duration hot fire as well. That will be the very last stage for full flight readiness testing for these engines and manufacture of the actual whole rocket itself is still very much well underway. The game is really on now between RFA and High Impulse to see who can be ready first for that all-important first flight from Saxevoord later this year. Finally, this past week saw the UK Space Agency hit the road for a tour of the country. Their Space for Everyone tour sees the UKSA hit 10 cities around the country, including one in my own backyard. They'll be bringing the Replica Launcher 1 rocket along for the ride, as well as representatives from companies such as In Space Missions along as well. The tour kicked off in Southampton this past week and the main aim is to inspire people of all ages to consider a career in space from right here at home, demonstrating the many different career options on offer. The best thing is, entry is free and it's open to all ages, so if there's a city near you from this list, consider getting along if you have kids or if it's perhaps your passion to enter into a career in spaceflight. So get along, go and see it, get inspired, bring the kids, bring the family, people of all ages. It's going to be an amazing tour and the chance to speak to people actively involved in the UK space sector is a chance that you do not want to miss. So what did you think about this week's news? Sound off in the comments below. There's been a lot happening in the UK and RFA are getting closer and closer to performing their first launch. Like I said there, the competition between them and High Impulse is really heating up now. Who's going to be the first to cross that line? You're all just going to have to stick with this channel to find out. So do consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell for future UK space news updates. Thank you all so much for watching. I've been Tom June and I'll see you next time.